Welcome to discourse number 30 with Sajad Ayyub and Sheikh Ibrahim Skatima. Assalamu alaikum. Revolution of the self, the emergence of nobility. Number two. To number two. So we all make things significant in our lives that we think give our lives importance and meaning. Yes, for some it's pursuit of knowledge, or, or power or women, etc. These are the things that we consider the nobility of our metaphorical city. Who then is the king that visits? Hmm. So this, this refers to a surah in, in Quran where um, uh, uh, Bilkis was going to be, is it Bilkis? Yeah, or the, yeah and the, or the Queen of Sheba was going to be uh, visited by um, uh, Suleiman. And um, mm -hmm. she basically was very concerned about this because she said, understand when kings come to a city, they despoil it. King doesn't come to mm -hmm. a city, but to despoil it. Um, and and that's really, so So who's the king? You know, the king is, is Allah. And um, mm -hmm. what is the city? It is the design we have for our own lives, how we try and make things work, how we try and plan things out and manage our affair and what we construct significance around. And when this reality comes to visit, everything else is flattened. It, you, that city will be despoiled. It doesn't matter what you've constructed the city out of. It might even be something very noble, you know, um, uh, uh, knowledge of Quran, uh, what, whatever it is, when the reality comes to visit, you are left uh, a field of ruins. Mm -hmm. uh, um, because uh, the, 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 the truth, the superordinate truth is so vast, is so majestic, um, that our, all of our endeavors are, are chaff in the wind against that. So um, if you truly are in pursuit of the inner life and pursuit of the divine encounter, you have to understand that this thing comes at the price of everything. Mm. You know, not just some things, everything. You know, if you want the Lord of all to be your companion, you have to be willing to have everything destroyed everything that you held dear, everything that you make is significant, it'll all go. You might get it back, but in the short term, you must be willing to lose it all. Why is that? I can, I can only explain this by way of my own experience. So, one of the most profound experiences I had of Khalwa, I won't go into what happened in the Khalwa, but it was actually the very first one I sat. I sat um, on a farm. The Khalwa is when you go into seclusion, you know, like the Rasul in the, in the cave, and you withdraw. Mm. I, it was under the direction of a sheikh, so I wasn't doing this completely off my own bat. Mm. And um, uh, when I came out of that experience, I... I, it was the most extraordinary experience. I'd never felt so free in my life. And I, I, was, I was walking down, I mean, I, sort of this incontainable joy. I was just marching. That was on a farm on a pass in the east of our country called the uh, Skumanskluf. And I was walking down this pass, felt that every stride was like, I was striding mountains. I mean, I was just, I felt as, as big as the sky. It was a huge experience. And I realized I was absolutely free. At that stage, I was married. I had three children. I had lots of responsibilities. I had a business. I had, if I went back, I back, went back because I chose. There was no compulsion. I could also choose to carry on walking, to find myself a herd of goats and to become a goat herd in the mountain for the rest of my life. 
Mm. There was no sentimentality that, as that connected me to my previous life. There was no sense of, of, of even duty. There was no sense of loyalty. All of that was a choice. I deliberately, there was, uh, there was no compulsion. There was no ill feeling. It was a choice of a free human being that went back into my life as a householder with three children. And now, before I went into that experience, if you would have said to me, this is going to happen to you, I wouldn't have done it. And I wouldn't have done it because I would have felt I constructed my life around the idea of being a good man, a provider, a father, a husband, a protector, a pro you know, all of that. Well, all of that nonsense got wiped away with this whole experience. So if you tell, have told me before that you would, you would renege on this, or you'd be able to renege on this contract that you've made with these people around you to be the provider and the protector and all this nonsense. I would say, I'm not willing to do it. Uh, it's, just, it's just, it's immoral. Mm. Oh. So when he came to visit that night in Skumans Kluf, and I got let out of that hole the next day, I chose to go back to the life I had. There was no compulsion in it. There's no ill feeling in it. There's a, a, you know, in fact, the life that I had prior to that had been destroyed. It had been dismantled that night mm. in that, uh, in that uh, hut. Oh. You know. Well, at the end of this, you must share that experience and how people can get, you know, how our audience can look at that. <clears throat> and those people that are interested in the halwa. What is the process of that? That would be a, I think that would be a very useful. Mm. You also, um, you will not achieve the highest if you do not sweep the ash and heaps of the world with yourself. Can you mm. explain this? This is still really consistent with um, uh, was this, uh, thank you for sharing. That. And thank you for sharing what you shared. I just want to. Oh, it was a pleasure. Yeah, because otherwise these things just stay kind of speculative, you know. Um, mm. So this thing of sweeping the ash heaps of the world with your, your with yourself. We said before that the thing that keeps us trapped. The most, the, uh, the most dangerous failing that we have is our desire for significance. Mm. That while we want to be seen by others, we are alienated from this vastness within, and we are trapped, we are chained by the world and others in these patterns of uh, reciprocity, of good behavior, so that we can get out of the world where we want. We mince ourselves through our lives um, and and uh, and uh, are always kind of at the behest of somebody else's good opinion of us. I mean, this is a, a miserable way to live, you know. Mm. Now, the only way to escape that, there can be no other way, is to forego your sense of significance and to forego any pretense of significance. Hmm. Now there can't be an easy. There can't be an. Uh, 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 there can't be a, uh, uh, another way of doing this other than to actually understand that you are lower than the low. You know that um, uh, be willing to clean. You know, there's, there's nothing must be beneath you. You know. Uh, be the one who puts out the shoes for people to step into the, as they leave the masjid. Be the one who makes the tea. Be the one who, you know, is, is the, that's the price. Because that by constantly foregoing your own need for significance, you start to inhabit your inner space because you're foregoing, you're letting go of the outer project. You start inhabiting the inner, and the highest is to be found there. It's to be found on the inside, not on the outside. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's also why you can never say, I mean, we have spoken about this before, but you, 
you can never judge. You don't know what you're looking at when you're looking at somebody. You walk past the man, he's sitting, you know, ashes and sackcloth on the street corner. And you think, oh, go home there, but for the grace of God, go I. And then a little angel whispers in your ear, you wish. Mm. Mm. You don't realize who this is. This is one of the princes of existence. The whole universe mm. is around because this person is there. Don't judge what you see with the eyes mm. of men. Mm. We are not here to claim, we are here to grant. What does that mean? And, and how does that relate to how people see themselves? So <clears throat> you can see your life as a as an ongoing series of accumulations. Mm. And that's like the laying claim too. Mm. Mm. Or you can see your life as an ongoing process of expenditures. Every moment that you're alive asks you to make yet another contribution, give a hand over something else, you know, um, and, and, and the, the, the most, the, the most valuable uh, things you ask to hand over the ones you don't want to hand over at the time, which is why they're valuable. You know, you said you're, the only measure I have of the degree to which you're sincere is the degree to which you're willing to do what is right when it doesn't suit you to do so. Yeah. Mm. That's um, so. So, um, if you see your life from that point of view, mm. that it's a steady uh, series of, uh, uh, of expenditures. That means that when the, the final exam comes, which is, is going to happen, called death, um, and it asks you the highest price, this is an exercise muscle. This is easy. I can do this. I know how to forego, I know how to hand over, and I know how to give in. Hmm. This is, we say it's a doddle. You know, we skipping, go skipping out of this existence arm in arm with Malakil Moat. Big friends. Which is what one would like to do. The other way of doing this, of course, is that you've constructed your life on the basis of your accumulations. And then when Marikel Moat comes through the door and you say to him, no, no, it's fine, but you know, I just want to go get my trailer with all my stuff. He'll say to you, what, what, I beg your pardon? No, 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 that stuff's all, yeah, you can't take that with you. you no. And you'll be horrified, you see. And, and, and that's when you don't go skipping out the door arm in arm with him. He drags you out kicking and screaming, you know, because you can't take the trailer with you, you see. Because no. you've made the project of your life the great accumulation. So better you make the project of your life the great contribution rather than the great take. Uh, make every moment, calibrate how you deal with every moment not on the basis of what you're trying to get, but how you can be helpful, how you can hand over. Because that, that's the only thing in the face of death. The only thing, you see, you see death, it's not, it's a skill that's being tested at the moment when you die. The skill is an eloquence in loss. Mm. So you spend your entire life cultivating an eloquence in accumulating, and when you get to the exam, you said you studied the wrong, you studied the wrong subject. <laughs> so there's only one question in the exam, and that's not how do you get stuff? How do you do stuff? And then you, oh, man, I was, I should have got the right textbook. You know, can you relate this to an idea of moving from periphery to the middle of things? Mm. You see, if you... The easiest way to describe this is to understand how harmony works in relationships. Mm. Mm. We know, we've now said this example a hundred times in this conversation, so I will get that jacket out of you one day, the nice way. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
<laughs> it's going to happen. But I want your waistcoat. We now know your ability to withhold the waistcoat gives you power over me. So, so, so I'm weak and you're powerful. I'm peripheral. You're central. Because you, you get the waist, you'll get the waistcoat when I see you next. <laughs> <laughs> so, so our experience of, of really that we are peripheral, we have an autonomy, we're kind of being at the best of others, we kind of like being, you know, we're being shaken around by our lives, that we're just the victims. That is the product of how our intent operates. If you construct your intent on the base of what you want to get, that will be your experience. Your experience is, I am peripheral to my life. I am, uh, I am, uh, I am not in the driver's seat. Everybody else in my life is in the driver's seat. I'm just the victim. Mm. So if you construct your life on the base of what you want to get, you become a victim. Mm. If, however, I construct every moment that I'm in on the basis of how I can be helpful, what I can give. So I deal with you on the basis of how I can be helpful to you. Um, I forego my really overwhelming need for this waistcoat of yours. I forgo it. No, no, no. no, no. Leave, leave his waistcoat for heaven's sake. How can you be helpful to the guy? The moment I do that, you can't manipulate me anymore because you can't mm -hmm. withhold the thing that I want, which means I'm now safe from you. But not only am I safe from you, but precisely because I'm trying to be helpful to you, you're safe from me. So I'm safe from you, you're safe from me, mm. and we have harmony. Now, mm. when I do that, you become my ally. And anything that I might have needed, you'll spontaneously give to me. I don't have to take it. It gets given. Mm. Mm. So my experience, if I do this consistently, my experience then becomes that the world is actually on my side. It delivers for me what I require, even whether I, I, mean, my, I, I don't even have to ask for it. I start experiencing that I'm mm. not kicked around by existence. I experience that I, at best, I'm, I dance with existence, but I'm the leading partner. I'm not peripheral to the affair. I'm central to the affair. Mm. I'm central to the world that I live in because I construct it. If I have 10 interactions in a day and every one of those interactions is based on what I want to get out of the person, we know how that's going to end. It's going to end in tears. So when I go to bed that night, mm. I'm going to feel like this is a miserable world. I mean, I mean, they're all out to get me and I'm, constantly under threat i'm i'm being yanked around by others because i want stuff that sits in their hands so obviously i'll be yanked around but if i shift my intent to how i can be helpful those same 10 interactions each one of them is going to turn into a cycle of spirit, spirit a spirit and experience of harmony so when i go to bed that night i look at my world and say, this is the most amazing place it's populated by my benefactors and my allies in other words i've made this experience I'm not peripheral, I'm central. Hmm. But it works in paradoxes, you see, because it's your desire to be central, that I want stuff, want to, that makes you peripheral. Hmm. It is foregoing that and actually making everybody else's interest your project, that makes you central. Hmm. It's like, it's amazing how you set this existence up. I mean, There's a complete it's a patterning of paradoxes. That the one who, who claims significance is, is humiliated. The one who grants significance is elevated. Right. The most significant thing you can do is not to achieve great feats in the world, but to achieve great feats perception what does this mean so you remember we spoke about this biography thing before yeah 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 so let's say um, um now that you mentioned that that takes place in the or 
uh, personal, the personal of course. Yeah, 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 right. So, so let's say, for instance, we're talking, you, you're talking your biographic account and, um, and it's, it's peppered with uh, uh, achievements. And, and, and we'll, we'll talk about that later as well, where people can actually find out more about the personal excellence course. Right, okay, that's fine, that's fine, yeah, yeah. Mm. So, we, we, so we, we, we look at your life and we, we, it's peppered with these achievements. It's kind of like, mm. okay, mm. that's fine. And, yeah. uh, and that's your narrative of your life. I've achieved this. I'm the grandest. I got this, you know. Mm. But to do that, you've had to discount all sorts of other bits of the, your own narrative. Mm. Yeah. So in that sense, this, the storyline that you has now produced who you feel you are. What about changing the position from the one who's been, who's the, who's a, the persona, the product of the story to becoming the, the, the author? But to become the author, you don't have to be, you have to be, be willing to not be hooked on one of the storylines. You've got to say, ah, no, no, no. I mean, that's one way of looking at my life. Yes, I've had all of these achievements, but you know, I've also had all of these experiences of beauty. So you can make my story the story of beauty. You can make my story. Yeah, but, you know, I've had, uh, you know, I've been quite a mean piece of work. I mean, I've, I've not taken prison. You can make my story about the, the the vicious one. You know, you can make the story. In other words, I'm no longer a product of a story. Mm. I'm a writer mm. of stories. I'm outside mm. of the story. I suit. So, so which is the which is the superior place? This first one is an achievement in the world. The second one is an achievement in perception. So what mm -hmm. you achieve is, is far less than and, and, and a capacity to work on how you see things is a far more powerful skill than a capacity to do things. You know, um, and the most profound seeing, the one that is the achievement of achievements, is the seeing that indeed my life has worked despite me. I'm not here to fix things. I'm here to recognize, witness, and bear witness to the fact that they work. The supreme achievement of my life is not a feat of action. It's a feat of perception. How I mm. see is far more important than what I do. You know, I could save 100,000. It's still beneath in value of one night witnessing that indeed he is the Rab. Indeed he is the Rab. The Kafir can stay about 100,000. It's only a believer who can witness, they might bear witness, indeed he is the Rab. Mm -hmm. In the final discourse, you talk about witnessing and that this again moves us from the middle of middle to the periphery, but there's something that it's in a different way of being. Can you finally explain this? Just say that again, please. Which in, in the in the final discourse, you talk about witnessing and that this okay. again moves moves us from the middle to the periphery and but this time it's in a different way of being right okay so so we start off this journey i'm here to get right and when i experience myself as being here to get i i i want to take from the world that taking gets makes me the rag doll slapped around by everything else i'm so in that sense i'm peripheral then I, then I deliberately start learning to give, you know, uh, and the more I give, the more unconditional I am about giving, the more I become central to the affair. I recognize actually I'm the one who's constructing this world around me. And then that comes to the point where I realize actually I don't have to do any taking at all 
It will all come to me. I can take my hands off the steering wheel. That's going back to the periphery, you see, because I'm no longer trying to be in charge. I forego being in charge. Because I completely forego being in charge, the li life works in my interest in a way that I can't even begin to imagine. So in that sense, I again become beautiful, but this time no, no longer in the status of the victim, but the status of the one that receives beyond what I could require. It's like the status of the prince in existence. Mm. The, 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 it's there for you. It's there to serve. It's there at your behest. So we go from being, being peripheral in the status of the victim to being central to the one who does the work to going back to being peripheral, but this time the status of the one who doesn't have to act in his own defense because everything works for you. So we've covered all 30 discourses. Mm. And subhanAllah, Jazakallah khair for taking your time. Thank you, Sajjata. Alhamdulillah. Explaining, explaining all these things, and it's been an absolute pleasure during Ramadan and the conclusion to, to get to this stage. Um, what I'd like to leave the listeners with is how can they access more information about the retreats, about what the kind of work that you do? Because it's very, very profound. And it's something that's very different that our listeners haven't heard before. And the mm -hmm. feedback that we're getting is how, how can they get in contact? How can they learn more? So your website, www.skatema.com group.com com. they can they can even, and, and they can also the zawiya also has a web website uh, zawiya ibrahim zawiya ibrahim dot com so ibrahim spelled with an e so z a w i a uh, e b r a h i m one word dot com dot com yeah and, mashallah uh, thank you very much jazakallah and thank you for your patience with me alhamdulillah alhamdulillah and thank you for your patience with with me as well jazakallah <laughs> khair and inshallah keep an eye out for more information from sheikh ibrahim skatema and future courses as well jazakallah khair and thank you for joining us assalamu alaikum wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah